Good, good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Coral Conversation Seminar Series. My name is Dr. Cheryl Sade. I am the Artistic Director of Vox Camerata, and I'm also an uh, honorary lecturer in the University of Queensland, Australia. So um, the Coral Conversation Series is basically a, a monthly conversation in a semi-formal sort of setting where we get researcher practitioners, teachers, uh, pedagogues box to come <clears throat> and share certain discoveries, certain reflections of the work. And at the end of the day, what we strive to do is to create a community that comes together to provide an impetus to share knowledge, to bring forward an, an impetus to kind of like um, forefront Indigenous knowledge, knowledge that is constructed from where we are as opposed to the places that we imagine culture to be. So today, uh, it is my distinct honour and pleasure to introduce my good friend, Yudi. <laughs> Dr. Yudi Nishi Parawan is a... Uh, amongst other things, he's a he's a faculty of the Singapore Bible College, of which uh, we have, uh, today is that they've gener generously given us a, a space here in the music uh, school music, school of church music. He's also the chorus master of SYC, and he's also a faculty member SSC. SSC, sorry, SSC, sorry, SSC, and he's also a faculty member of the CCRP, the Choral Collective Residency Program, uh, which is run by Vox Camerata. And uh, the work that he's doing today is actually quite important uh, with regard to us understanding what uh, grasping Indigenous knowledge is about. Too often we have had this grand imagination of what choral music should be, and it's predicated on a Western paradigm. Mm. And yet there is vocal choral music in this part of the world since, you know, since time we time remembered. Um, Okay, I'm not going to steal the thunder. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, I'm going to invite uh, Yudi. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to talk in front of my students and also friends and called, heard many times, but only met for, for, for the first time. Now, let me go straight to my lecture. Um, of course, I have to go all the way in the beginning. Yeah. There you go. Okay, probably have to. Yes. Okay, it's revisiting vocal hierarchies in choral music. When you say vocal hierarchies, um, you know, should there be soprano, alto, tenor basses in our choir? Yeah. Uh, in Asia, when we talk of uh, choral music, we have a set mind that it's got to be four voices. And uh, and when we write music for choral, uh, we, we have to follow the four part harmony that we study, all the counterpoints, yes? We always have that. There's nothing wrong with that. I studied Harmony. All of us here in, in SBC studied harmony, and it's one of the hardest subjects. I have to. I have to say yes. There's harmony, and there's also advanced harmony. You have counterpoint and advanced counterpoint. Yeah. Uh, you even have modal counterpoint and tonal counterpoint. All of those things, right? And those are all essentials. It's good to know uh, how to create music based on the Western. Uh, science né? especially if you are in the church music and you are to compose let's say a hymn most of the time if you will make that hymn accompanied by a string quartet or a brass quartet or an orchestra kind we kind of have to be faithful to the western discipline okay so how does how did this uh vocal hierarchy start do you know How did it start? How did the ladder start? It all started from who sings the cantus firmus or the fixed melody is called the tenor. Okay, so if you sing, oh, what happened? Okay, we lost it again. Sh should I just, or I'll, I'll use the signal, huh? No, I'm doing the trans screen. Yeah, you have to do it. Or can I just use that then? Is that easier? I think it's easier. Okay. Okay. That is easier. Then I, I need, you need this, right? That's where you have to 
Thank you so much for doing this. Technology. <laughs> no, this one here. Oh, this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Should be okay now. Ha! Wonderful. But can we cover that thing there? I'm not going. It's going by itself, yeah? <laughs> okay, uh, again, it starts from a tenor. So if you sing the, the, the cantus firmus or the fixed melody, there you're called a tenor. Okay, and then here comes the counterpoint. Anything that any voice that will sing against the tenor, they call it that's why they call it contra co 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 counterpoint. Okay, any other voice that will sing with the tenor is called contra tenor or counter tenor. So if you have a melody and uh, the counter tenor is lower, then you call it contra tenor basus. Yeah. If you have another me uh, another melody and it's higher than the tenor, it's called contra tenor altus because the word alto means actually high. Okay. So that's it started there, and then after that they realized that uh, okay, we we can actually have a, a higher melody and then they call them then the cantus okay the chanter okay and some good composers thought of why not five voices and uh, some something uh, above that cantus then they call them the descantus okay uh and then some other genius composers said i can actually write for six voices i mean six melody and what do i call the one on top they call it sopra Sopra. In fact, in the, in, in the Philippines, if you're a Filipino, anything that is uh, overflow, we call it sobra. It's, it's from the Spanish word. Yeah, it's sopra. So that's how it started. But you have to understand that these are, uh, 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 they really have nothing to do with whether the voice is higher or lower. These are independent melodies. Yes. In fact, in the madrigal tradition, if let's say you have five voices, and it so happened that your cantus is missing, you can ask another basus to sing it. <laughs> it's okay. That's how tough the counterpoint uh, uh, the time was. Eh? If, let's say, the bass is missing, get a lute player and he can play it. And that's how they, they were that time. So in, they were interchangeable. Yes. Again, even the range during those years in the in the Renaissance, in the early Renaissance, were not as high as the as the ranges now. In fact, oh, I forgot to bring. I was supposed to bring my A, my uh, tuning fork A four hundred fifteen, which is the Baroque tuning, yeah, which is one half lower than the A four forty. Okay, so it is even known that probably they were saying even lower than. The A four hundred fifteen, because you have to understand these singers. If this is the ecclesiastical tradition, these were men. Okay, so you have to understand the one singing the sopra or the sopranus is not a female's voice. Soprano is a boy's voice. Yes, the sound of a child. That is the sopranus. The uh, the inclusion of female singers inside the motet tradition was rare. If it's a madrigal, maybe yes. Yes, when you're singing in the chamber and then in secular places, it's okay to have female. But inside the chapels, inside, when you say motet, passion, oratorio, men and boys, okay? So that's the history, okay? So, but that's not my lecture today. I'm just want, uh, wanting to tell you that that is the uh, tradition that we followed for a long time. Eh? So from that five voices, it... okay, I, how come I cannot control it anymore? Hmm. I lost control. Do it again. How come? Ah, so we're down to four voices, right? The soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And you know that uh, through the years, here comes the the years of the uh, co soprano coloratura, all these designations, and then you have the contralto. Okay. By the way, when you say contralto, it simply means not men or not man. 
because altus is actually a man. Yes, altus is a man. When you say contralto, it's a female alto. That's that's basically it. Okay, so that's our that's a Western tradition. Now, why am I giving this talk on revisiting the vocal hierarchy? Okay, it's very good that uh, Dr. Sakaraya is here because way back in the 1970s, the, the Southeast Asian Front in choral music opened up, okay? Spearheaded by a school called the Asian Institute for Liturgy and Music. That was also the year of what we call the contextualization of liturgical practices in Asia. What does it mean? Uh, you have to understand that Asian churches learned the Bible in the Western eye. Yeah, we learned choral music in the Western eye. Okay, uh, even theology is very, very Western. Yeah, and so can we contextualize it then in the Asia? Maybe we could reach more people in Asia uh, if we contextualize it. And that's that began, uh, began the, the work yeah? in, the, in the late 1970s. And then it, uh, they included music that time. Okay, so the contextualization of liturgical music, when you say liturgical music, that's church music, that is bringing in church music in the Asian context. Okay, how did we learn uh, uh, music in the church? Tonal, right, major and minor. Right. Never did you learn uh, music in Pelok scale or Slendro scale or or the raga scale or the uh, the rag, you know? or the pentatonic scale. I should say the pentatonic. So they said, okay, then we have to learn now uh, new vocal music in the uh, in the, in the Asian lens. Okay. So we have now. We have a lot of students coming from different parts of Asia trying to learn composition and choral sciences, choral, choral music. The first question was, how can we get our materials or how can we teach the Western material when we don't even have singers in our tribes? Right. And so the director at that time, Francisco Feliciano said, you create your music. Yeah, you create your music. And then, then so they created the music. We learned everything, piano, harmony, voice. Yeah, how did we learn it? Western way again. Yeah, and I said, okay. Uh, Francisco Feliciano said, you know what? Maybe it's better if you don't even learn the staff notation. Yeah, so he said, okay. So how do we write it then? Oh, don't bother about writing, just learn them first so that we absorb the mood and practices and the sound. Okay, so that's what, what we did. We sang traditional folk songs and then changed the words into liturgical words. Yes, we had a lot of adaptations of, uh, of, of traditional chants and folk songs and changed them actually to new biblical words. Yes, and now we have the melody with new words. Okay, next question. How about choralizing it? So 1980s, we witnessed what we call the choralization of, of Asian vocal music. Yeah. In fact, I always tell people the first time I was here was 1986 when I performed at the Victoria Concert Hall with the Philippine Madrigal Singers and he was there. And also Nelson Quay was there. I didn't know that he was also there. And I remember Dr. Uh, Sui Hong because he was a graduate also of ALEM, yeah? And that was the time when we even brought the music handwritten by Robert Delgato, yes? And we had Lisoi Lisoi from Bahasa Indonesia, uh, Korean songs, all choralized, okay? How did we sing that? Well, if it's quite near to Western harmony, then we kind of follow the Western way, but also, uh, we realize that there are Asian way of singing and therefore there are also Asian ranges because of the placement, we also have to include the range of the voices. Our top graduates after the Indonesians were the Nagas. Yes, Bakugao Chishi and the uh, And then we, that's the time that now we started uh, arranging music using the, 
uh, Asian expressions. What are those? A lot of them, which I'm gonna talk about, okay? So, you see me there? Oh, okay. At that time we were playing, We uh, that's, that's me. Yeah, uh, we were doing the the Asian mask of uh, of Yeon Yong Lee, Lee Yeon Yong. Yeah, okay, these were our students. That's James Wu over there. This is uh, Christian Tamaela. Oh, Christian, the late, the late Christian. Oh, but he created a lot of music for the church and for choral music in Indonesia. Oh, great man. Yes, and. Ginting, Pulumun Ginting, Taro, Indonesia. Lata. And he's, do, he's holding a, a kuchapi. And he he's, he looks like he's singing there, but boy, he has a, a voice so rough, more rough than, uh, than, uh, um, is again. Well, is again. The, uh, Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. When he talks, he talks that way, and he doesn't have a voice, but he composes. Yeah. Okay. So. So we said uh, instead of the organ, let's use uh, uh, other instruments as our basis. So we have the can, but it can from 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 Thailand. There's a the mouth bamboo organ. Yes. K H A E N, can, and we even had in Chai Sri Suan at that time composing uh, um, choral music, four part, uh, using the, the sound of the can and also the, the drone and ostinato. And that is one thing in common that we have, the ostinato playing, the vocal balls, and the imitation of the instruments, which we call it now vocal orchestration. Yeah, okay. So, so the exercises that we have is that we give the melody. Obviously, this is a this is a pentatonic music, right? Pentatonic. That's in in, in my language. So we teach. Okay, just use three notes or five notes. That, okay, that's yeah. The text is my kumati pagariam, which means uh, uh, the kingdom come. Okay, so we give them the assignments. The initial thing that they have to do is. To, is to create a second voice. The problem is sometimes they, they cannot get away from their Western, from their hymn tradition, and many things happen. Yeah, They, they sometimes compose re really crazy uh, music. As you can see, oh, that's too high. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so sorry. Yeah? Uh, and, and because they have to think very Western at that time. Okay, uh, how does it sound? Sounds like that. Okay, it's, it's, it's wonderful, right? Uh, let me go back. <laughs> it doesn't move. How come? Okay, that was the music. Yes, and there is a Picardy third at the end, and it's a, oh okay. Um, so we told them maybe you don't have to think Western harmony. Yes, you don't have to think tonal. You can think modal. Yeah. So it doesn't need to be very high for the soprano. Yeah. Does it need to be for choir? Does it need to be four voices? Maybe not. Okay. Uh, do you need the bass to be very low? Look at that, right? And does it need to be with accompaniment all the time? No. And we have to tell them, liberate yourself from the Western uh, tradition. It's already five notes. You can just do it. Like it sounds almost like a nagana. Ho he he ho he ho he ho he ho. Yeah, etc. Okay, and you don't need to think of an orchestra. Huh? That's a picture of the Handel's Messiah in the first performance. Okay, so now how to utilize Asian vocal materials? Okay, so endorse simple three or two part singing with accompaniment. And what kind of accompaniment? Does it need to be uh, piano? Uh, Piano, it, it only happened now that nowadays piano is very available. Not only that, keyboard is so available. But you have to understand that the history of a, of the choralization of Asian music is rooted from the fact that many tribes in Asia don't have piano. 
And that's why the tradition of choral singing in Asia is actually a cappella. Why? Piano is expensive and the pianist is more expensive. Okay? Yeah, you cannot maintain that, yes? You, you laugh. But nowadays we have keyboards. Okay, yeah. because she's a pianist, okay? Yes? So we, we, yeah, but sometimes the problem is that if we don't have guitar, what can we do? And then use the keyboard lap. Okay, <laughs> for example, uh, let me, before I play this, ah, that's the thing. Yeah, let me show you the score of, on this day, yes? I think I have a sample. Mm -hmm. The on this day is not here. Let me share the, what did I do? Okay, I'll go back. I thought I prepared everything. Okay, where's the word? Oh, there you go. This is the latest, one of my latest ar arrangement of on this day, and uh, Father Manolin Francisco said they need something that is easy for the for the general public. Should be okay. Wait a minute. We have problem with connection again. Okay, go ahead. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, we're losing connection. It's good that you're here. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Momo. Okay. So, this is a contemporary uh work of course for now i have to say SATP because that's the only thing that we honor at the moment i cannot give another term for the new hierarchy i just have to say uh, uh SATP it's for guitar and it's just a drone from beginning until the end i just made a drone and most of the time unison yeah and then there's a part there that it would go uh two voices yes and at the end, it's just a ripple, four voices, but ripple, which means uh, it's just a tapestry. Okay, they can they can sing in 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 their on their own tempo. They just repeat this in their own tempo. So it's per it's perfectly fine if the singers do not sing together. <laughs> but, right? <laughs> in other words, it's it's actually more of a uh, of a tapestry. Yeah, we uh, need this in the category, yeah, right? Yes, it's okay. Very nice. So it becomes a ripple because it, it, it tapes three, right? So um, let me go back and I'll give you a sample of the music. Here we go. I hope you can hear it. Yeah. Again? Again, again? No food. No? no. 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 Oh. Wow, the <laughs> Thailand. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> so that is so embarrassing. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's listen to this. Oh, sorry. It's a stadium. What did I do? Wait a minute, huh? And there you go. Mm -hmm.
I'll bring my son. Just ripple. So that if you have a very raw choir, the congregation will just sing the melody. You just assign your choir to sing only only the counterpoint. Okay. okay. So let me go back to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, okay. Went out again? Okay, we're fine. Okay, how come? Yeah. Okay, so one way to utilize is acknowledge the narrow mouth singing also. Uh, Asian talking and Asian singing is narrow mouthed. Western singing is dome. We have the dome. So if we have Asian songs as much as possible, if you can follow the, the, uh, the Asian narrow mouth singing, that would be great. So, so we have the, the, again, that is linguistically dependent. If your linguistic, if your uh, language group calls for a narrow mouth uh, talking, uh, I honor. I would rather honor that kind of uh, singing. Okay, now that uh, I have, let's say, the song. Uh, we, we, we usually say paru parung bukit nadi lipat lipat, and we don't want them to sing paru parung bukit nadi. Although that's also possible if it's arranged that way, right? Okay, for example, this is a song, We Are We, from my tribe. So it's very narrow. We are we, we are we. Okay. And uh, when I, we give this to our students, most of the time when they start singing, uh, it, it kind of changed the color. Yeah. Well, it's okay, maybe if you, you arrange it in a very Western way, but uh, again, I would rather that they, they arrange it in a different way. For example, I can do a. Let's say as, as, a, as a counterpoint, yes? That could be either female section or male section. And the men will just sing, In fact, there are some songs that I arrange that I have to tell them, try to sing it with your pinky lock in the middle of your, your mouth so that you sound that way. Not, <laughs> yeah? It's really loud, yes? Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. And we have a lot of that in the in, in the Asian tradition, narrow mouth singing. Yeah. <laughs> Difficult, yes? 
Another another way is to maximize the comfortable singing range. Okay, this is the thing about Asian music. We have what we call the sweet spot in singing. The problem sometimes is when you start arranging it in a, uh, when you arrange it in the comfortable range, it's still okay. For example, Juwa ai talum alai taku ai we have that. The problem is once you start giving them high note, they will start singing it in the Western way. Because you cannot sing a chest tone in a very high range. Eh? So they have to migrate to a Western um, place. It's okay. Lah. I mean, as long as you have it in your choir. Yes. But they tell them, what if you don't have it? Okay, then it's okay to, to maintain uh, in the comfortable singing range. You have to understand that even in the gospel singing, they belt. They belt. It it sounds like it's high, but actually it's low because they belt. Yeah. Of course, Moses Hogan is Moses Hogan because Moses Hogan have one hundred singers. Yes, does he can he can afford to 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 give it again? Again, we're talking about your choir. We're not talking about Philippine Madrigal singers or Moses Hogan choir. Yeah. But let's talk about your church, or especially that these church musicians here are going back to their tribes. Yeah. If you remember Ban Ban, when she was our Myanmar student, Kachin, when she was giving me her work, said, this is good for country Korum, but when you go back to your Kachin tribe, you will not be able to sing this, revise it. Yeah? And, and that's why Ban Ban tried to, to compose something that is really achievable for, for her members. That's why she got the, Maya, the, the Myanmar uh, congregation. She made them sing it in a very comfortable range. Yeah? Again, it's to serve your people and not to impress, not to bless. Okay. Okay. Now, um, now let me share again another music. How I how I apply the the range. Okay. If if the sopranos and the altos can share almost the same range, I just call it at the moment sopralto, sopralto one, sopralto two. There is such thing as al tenor or tenor alto. Usually, when you have children who are formerly uh, boys who are formerly soprano and they break, the next range that they will sing is actually tenor alto. That very limited range. Before they were doing it, when they change it, began, and then they break up, they break down. So they practically they're singing actually tenor alto. That is not so high, not so low. Yeah, it's a nice solution so that the, so that your children will not feel discouraged. Many of them they cannot sing anymore. They they, they crack. They feel they uh, they crack, and, and their neighbors will laugh, and they don't come back anymore mm -hmm. uh, to the choir. We encourage them stay in the choir, even if it means that you have to sing octave lower than the original uh, uh, range, and then just call yourself. Oh, what will be our voice then? We're neither soprano or alto. Al tenor. Yeah, or tenor alto. Okay, and I made a sample of that uh, composition. Uh, I actually gave it to the SSC Affair. That's our outreach. That was during the lockdown, right? Um, we didn't know what's gonna happen. We didn't know how many will sign up, and uh, because of that, we were we we were afraid that very few will come. So, so I compose a music with very limited range. Okay, this version here is now for children's choir. Yes, I, I see. I, I wrote there sopralto one, sopralto two, but it's really low range, and then altenor one and altenor two. You have to change the screen share. Which one? Screen share. Did I not screen share? Uh, it's stuck to the old screen share. So you go to that. You go to that. Oh, so sorry. And let's share again. Okay, share again. Is this the one? No, yeah, no, yeah. no. Okay, click the click that one again. The, the blue, the green color one. The green color one. Uh, this one. Exit the PPT. No, this one. This one. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, click this one. No, I have to exit this one first, right? No, let's yeah. just try try this one first and then click share. See where it goes. Okay. 
Ah, I have to click some of them out, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Ah, there you go. Okay, I just have to put this down. There you go. So this is the limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So limited range, right? Limited range. So I will not make you listen to this anymore because it's not yet recorded. It's just the MIDI. Yeah. Okay. Now let me go back to the PPT. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. How come? Okay, I think you're okay. It's okay now. Is that right? Okay. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Also, okay, so the same thing, adapt a non-formal vocal placement, yes? Don't always tell them, be very round in your voices if it, you don't need that. Uh, this is one example. Okay, so do you, do you, do you see the, the, the ostinato? Um, because I was imitating a gabang. A gabang is a, is, it's a xylophone, a South Philippine xylophone. And I wrote there in the, in the sheet, hit between E and E flat. Because that's just tuning, it's, it, it's, it's an impure third. So it's impure minor third. So they have to sing near to the instrument, okay? Another way is to incorporate familiar music to the local language and instruments. If you have already a, a familiar uh, music, um, most of the hymns were actually translated to the tribe, tribal language, right? And then just let the melody be sung and then incorporate the local instrument. Or if you don't have the instruments, then imitate the instruments. We call it the vocal orchestration, okay? How do you uh, how do you call that kind of the singing? Uh, well, no. Okay. Uh, really? Never mind. Let's we'll, we'll skip that. Okay. Vocal orchestration is basically the imitation of instruments and making them into accompaniment. How do you use it? Either as ostinato, which is something that is very common in the Philippines. Yes. Uh, in in Asia, ostinato. In again, in the very comfortable comfortable range. Do you have to give them a, a voice assignment? For now, we just have to tell them tenor, or soprano, or or bass line for the lack of term, right? But if you have a term in your own region, name it. We have a term for ostinato, which is bandilan. I don't know if you have a term in Bahasa value for 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 the one that's that's actually just making the ostinato. I think there might be there might be in, in, in Bahasa Indonesia and it's also specific to yeah like kotikan you know that yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's it's it yeah. sounds like the cedar yeah, yeah. Mm. and also remote what is remoting if you have let's say a western music you can actually remote it according to your uh whatever mode you have in your in your country um for example this peri bahasa that I Okay, you know this because it's from NAC. Okay, you know this, especially those who are in Singapore. I arranged this for uh, for SSC, and I the first time I heard it, it was first in Western. Now I made it. I made it now. I loved it. The Malaysian, the Malaysian. Uh, So I, I didn't make it Western anymore. I remoded it. Okay. 
even uh, uh, remember that um, facing the task unfinished, we made it remote. We remoted it. Take out the thirds, keep an open uh, open fifth, and it will not define whether it's minor or major. Remember, the third is the one that defines the majorness and the minorness of the music. Mm -hmm. Take it out. You can yeah, and then capitalize on the melodic orientation of the singers, which means if your group cannot sing harmony, give them all melodies, give them counterpoints. Okay. Let me continue. Alternative vocal layers. You have the main ground as, as the melody, you have the subground, the time current that is usually the the uh, um in the Philippines, it's the interlocking of rhythm, right? You can make a co-ground, a counter melody, a poly chanting the same melody, right? Like what we uh, heard in the, uh, on that day, a vocal tapestry using sound. You know, they have that, okay? Vocal orchestration, okay? Many ways. Textual motif ostinato, vocable ostinato. Vocable means these are just words that don't have any meaning. Yes, oh he yo, oh he yo, oh he yo, oh he yo, etc. etc. Adapt contemporary jargon, belter, crooner, pop placement, beat vox, chest, chest tone. Yes, consider adapting local jargons also like hume. Right? Passionista in the Philippines, we have those, those singing uh, chants uh, during. Uh, during a Holy Week, Nigunit, Israel. Okay, okay, that and this is uh, these are just samples. Okay, so in other words, we uh, we have to um, encourage your your composers to be very creative, to be very adaptive. Yes. We call ourselves here, by the way, ethnodoxologists. Okay. Be realistic, be practical, and be resourceful. Okay. That started the choralization of vocal music in Asia. Yeah. When we lost all the Western thing, including the instruments, we just have to be very, very resourceful. Yeah. It's just like Bach. When Bach didn't have his support from the government, uh, from the mayor, he made it on, on, on the way he wanted it. And that's why we have the pieces of Bach that didn't sound Vivaldi or didn't sound any other composer than Bach. Okay? Okay. We can have now question and answer. Yes. Let's give a little round of Okay, so um before we open this up to uh, uh, no, any questions or comments, if there's any questions or comments from the people on Zoom, uh, just type it in the chat and we'll we'll try to take a look at it as well. Um, I just want to kind of like highlight one of the things that we heard that I thought was very poignant. Don't do things to impress, do things to bless, right? Especially in this, in this age whereby um, especially in Singapore at least, where the mm. art form is almost weaponized in yeah. schools. Yeah. Weaponized, weaponized to the, the, the fact whereby it's for competitions, it's for prestige. And we've kind of lost our way in terms of understanding why we make music, why music is meant to be a, a vehicle for uh, fostering communities, to bring people together, uh, shared understanding, shared identities. And I think a lot of the choral uh, music practitioners in Singapore, in a way, they grew up in this particular paradigm. And for us to kind of peel away from this is a lot of work, which is why I'm so admirable of the, the things that uh, Judy has been doing so far in teaching uh, future church uh, uh, church leaders as uh, worship leaders, as uh, music practitioners, as ethnodoxologists. So I know, I, and I'm just going to cut this short also by saying that. Um, this is it is important for us to see new ways of looking at how we make music in the context of our communities, our institutions, our cultures. And the work is tremendous, but it begins. Right? Okay, with that, any questions, comments, uh the thoughts? Anybody?
Uh, and by the way, people on Zoom, feel free to drop a note or drop a question. So this is where you know we as yeah. teachers try. Right? We say anyone questions, you look up, you look down, you look down, you look up. If you choose, I contact. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody thoughts? Before I start calling names. <laughs> yeah. What's going through your mind, Victor? Yeah, I guess I'm thinking, you know, to incorporate some of the more advanced, like indigenous. Techniques like the uh, angle variety and the number of and uh, rhythmic kind of polyrhythms and yeah, or polyphonic music, right? And a lot of like, I mean, it seems like how do we start doing that? We're going to create a whole mm -hmm. thing. So, such a creative opportunity. It kind of is. Thing. And you'll be surprised that children are the number one uh, group of singers who can do that naturally without any, uh, you know uh without any effort give them a rhythm and give another counter rhythm to the children and they'll just play around yeah. and uh again the, the language plays a very important role so. yeah. just to just to add to that right i mean the paradigm of language acquisition as children you know as long as they are immersed in the you know in the uh, in the language itself, they pick it up. As adults, we have to use a you know a, a, a sort of like a language frame to go to a third, second language to a third language and then translate back. It's very similar to music too, especially myself. I'm Western, you know, uh, conservatory trained, and for me to think about even things like gamelan, I look at it unfortunately from a Western you know Western paradigm. I translate it back. Mm. You know, from the Western paradigms. And this is the, the leap that we need to, uh, at least for me, I need to overcome. Mm. I need to reacquire the, the language, the, the, the modes of thinking uh, that is more in tune with my language and my, and my culture, as opposed to going through various factors, various, mm. um, what do you call that? Uh, filters. Yeah. By the way, Kenneth has a, uh, some words here. Uh, uh, for, uh, for him, brief. Vocal orchestration, the one I mentioned, he simply calls it actually vocal stration. Mm -hmm. Vocal stration. Um, are we perhaps generally in around, the, yeah, we are the same, lacking a formal study of vocal stration or combined vocal texture because we pour so many resources into orchestration to combine instrumental forces. Yeah. Vocal stration it comes in different forms because every culture has what they call vocables. Mm -hmm. Um, the vocables may not necessarily imitate an instrument. For example, we have the, um, you know, the, the the Hungarian third, ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. right? They they use that as a vocable, and then they 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 repeat it until it becomes an ostinato. Okay, in the case of an imitation of an uh, uh, of an instrumental sound, um. That is still something that is, uh, again, that is nothing traditional. That is something that is childish. I say when they imitate the whistles, yeah, or the instrument, yeah. But again, that is also something very historical during the time of the madrigals when they call the program music when they imitated the trumpet, ta 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 ta, yes, or. They imitate the the, the cricket, yes, the birds. grillo, the birds, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, the flute, or the drums, or the drums, the drums. The, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. the, a lot of that. The, the, the program music started really, really way uh, early, and I think during the the choralization and the madrigalization of Asian music, we started with that as well. Mm -hmm. There are lots of uh, of imitation of instruments because we don't, we cannot bring the instruments, especially the gamelan. And yeah, so we say, boom, yes. Or the pamugun, for example. They imitate the hitting of the, of the gong. Yeah. Thanks, Kenneth. Thank you, Kenneth.
Mm. Then some of my family members even ask me, why should we must be like this? Huh? Good question. Then I don't even know how to, to answer that. Right. It's like, mm. a, yeah, normally we see like this, but it's mm. more uh, make our stuff more powerful. I can only see that. Yeah, yeah you, you, are, you are telling them in the in the standpoint of the vocal care also. Yeah, yeah yes, because, it's more like yes. you can see. Uh, more comfortable, more comfortable. yes yeah. but again they're taking it from the linguistic point also is that yeah but we don't talk that way that's, that's yeah, the, the, yeah. Don't even exactly yeah. the first time we saw molly Huang and the ventricle singers we were so wide until we realized no we do problem <laughs> and we should not place it there we actually have to place it there a little more in the front. Yeah. Another case in point, when we were singing, you were you were there, you watched at that, that that night. One pen do one sip song nam kornong tem That is the this uh, that is the loy loy karatong. We can I cannot sing it that way anymore. Nam one pen do one sip song nam kornong tem dali rao tang lai chai thailand and when i sing it that way they like it when i say loy loy of course they will clap they will clap but i tell you for them it's it's ridiculous <laughs> really it's ridiculous but they will they, they will clap you know thai people they're very they're very polite no matter how Yes. Oh, very, very nice song. Very nice song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Dr. Bo, any thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, language is one big point here for a different kind of sound meaning. Yeah. And the very big difference for language is Chinese language and French. Monosyllabic. Yeah. So one word is one syllable, almost. It's it's in Chinese. Same, almost. Uh, because yeah. there are sometimes two words put together to yeah. form a phrase. The same words, uh, same meaning. Um, and then uh, syllables and pitch and tone. Yeah. So, so many different things. We, we have to totally learn a new, another three years of harmony, but it's fine. Right. Yeah. Because that's one of the okay, especially the Chinese first musicians. The question is, do you you know sometimes we translate the the Western hymn to Chinese, but you don't follow the bands. Yeah. And for the Chinese here in our uh, our school, they don't sometimes understand what is already Chinese because we don't have the band. Now they try to do the band. But the question is, if you sing four part harmony, do you also bend the other voices? It's strange, right? Yeah. So, so totally, you have to rearrange it. Correct. The the best way is not to do vertical, but to do it very horizontal in a maybe in a contrapuntal way. Mm. Yeah, that that's a big issue. The Chinese uh, translated Chinese songs. You talk about this Chinese, even worse in Chinese and Cantonese. Literally, yeah. you can't even adapt it. You cannot forget <laughs> about harmony. Yeah. Forget <laughs> about harmony. It's also fully distorted. Yeah. It is. You think you do what you're talking about here. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes, maybe it's better to just sing it. It's just melody. Just that's, melody. That's melody. Yeah. Adapted melody. Adapted melody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, have to, you have to change it to otherwise different meaning. Yeah. yeah. I, I spoke to, <laughs> because there are a lot of uh, Hong Kong composers here. Uh, I know, and I, I ask them why there's no choral music for not no, but there are few good ones out there. It's the Japanese, it's Japanese, it's too slow. Yeah. And because the soprano moves this way, the bass, the alto moves this way, it's a different meaning. So <laughs> <they're different. laughs> they, don't, they don't arrange for themselves the, the Hong Kong people. But we have other races who are, other people who arrange. Non, non, and, and, and it's like 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Right. Actually, mentoring is okay. Mentoring is, mentoring is okay. interestingly all right yeah, because of the hot tone, it's actually like a punctuation, like an exclamation. Yeah. So, stuff yeah. uh, can, can be different, Any. but then you, then you reduce it to three tones. Da, da, da. So, <laughs> not, not so bad. Yeah. But Canton is bad. I'm not joking here. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. dear. Nine tones. Yeah. Oh. The whole octave, but can't even beat it. Now. Each one different meaning. Each one different meaning. Finally, mm -hmm. maybe there are more experiments or how to do with yeah. this, like you say, contrapunto, yeah. one, unison singing, yeah. counterpoint singing, yeah. or parallelism. Parallelism. Parallel. Yeah. Or even encapsulated. Yeah. The, the choir is. Is, is, is a sound scape. Yeah, the right. melody flow and hot you know. And that, that works, but it just needs to readapt. You need to be in the culture. That's right. I mean, just like how languages are created uh, by my friend who works in private translation. They have to live there for 10 years before exactly. they start the start, 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 start. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you know the language, you still have to live there for 10 years to, to be immersed in the culture because context is different. Mm -hmm. I mean, we say, have you had dinner? They say, have you had it? Why? That's how we are. Oh. It's, it's, it's totally different. Right? That's why when you say earlier on about uh, translating uh, in, in the right context, yeah. you may have to translate. Uh, that's why the Bible yeah, says, yeah. have, have you eaten rice? It's just like eating supper, mm -hmm. as opposed to you know, dinner. Oh dear. Uh, in, in the Bible now, the one the one we get. Yeah. It's the same. Supper, no? mm -hmm. to adapt to our culture. Yeah, contextualization. Yeah, context. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Sorry to be a party pooper, but it's time, it's, it's 88 or 3. Yeah. Uh, and, um, Wait, that's all the time we have. I, Gerald, uh, Gerald, sorry, I know you you, you typed in something. Yeah, um, so nice. Huh? Yeah, uh, but unfortunately, because we are we we don't have enough time. Um, thank you for your comment. <laughs> you for your <laughs> yeah, but you know, we, uh, yeah, that's all we have for today. Can we give another round of applause for Judy? Thank you. Thank you for your time. Also, learn a lot from you guys. And on behalf of Vox Camerata and the University of Queensland, Australia, uh, I would like also like to again thank the Singapore Bible College for hosting us. And thank you all for coming and having this wonderful conversation. Okay, so thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.